Hi guys, this is M again. Um, I want to say before this dance goes any further, you know my main message is grow your own food. I want to answer the question why in global terms and local terms. Now, um, why do I say that organic farmers, organic farming is in center stage right now during these very insane times? And what I am telling you is, yes, this is center stage. You are center stage right now. There is tremendous opportunity, which is now in your lap. It may not be apparent according to what you can actually do as far as the movements go. When I mean, you can't even move to your friggin' mailbox, where's the opportunity, right? Well, what I'm telling you is that um, we need to return to localization. I'm going to say all of these things in as compact a way as possible now. A return to localization, okay? What is localization? One of the groups I try to keep up with is Local Futures, and the founder there, Helena Norbert Hodge, recently said she's a big proponent of localization, which is the opposite of globalization. What's localization? You grow a crop in your field. You, you harvest that crop. You give it to people nearby you. That's it. Local. Everything's local. Okay. That makes a lot of sense, not only bacteriologically, but uh, logically speaking, logistically speaking, trust-wise speaking, culture speaking, all of that. It only makes good sense to do this, folks. Local behavior. Unfortunately, farming is not sexy. Farming is not part of all things cool and sexy nowadays, right? You want to you want to wipe out a room. You want to clear a room. Go to a crowded party and say, "Let's talk about farming." Oh my God! Look at the time; they're gone, right? That's the problem. Most countries now are getting quickly to the point where they don't have enough people out there to do the farming, uh, near, especially nearby the cities. This is where globalization has kind of chased everybody away with the mechanized farming and what now. Now, what is globalization? Long story short, globalization is a very few very large companies all owned by the same folks that run everything this is economic globalization okay we are all as one and all that sort of thing that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about an economic picture which is going on right now and has been now for the last decade or so as you are aware okay now the problem is for them right now and we thought they were infallible, right? The problem for them is right now, people are staying home. Uh, people are being scared away from doing things. Uh, people are getting sick. Uh, there are, are laws which are keeping people from going to work. That means shipping people as well as doctors and as well as everybody, every other one of us. Uh, that is affecting the long supply chains that are necessary to get globalization in motion. To, to, to feed and to provide source income for globalization. Okay, there's two sources for globalization. Number one, you and me, the population of the planet. We give them all their power because guess what? We're the ones earning the money. They just want to get it all back from us. Okay, that's their source of power, main source. Number two is exactly what I'm talking about long supply chains. Now what are supply chains? Crop is grown in country A. It needs to go to country B, C, D, E, F, and G, right? Uh, because that that uh, supplier, that farmer in country A is a producer for the globalized guys. Let's call it the club. That's a producer for the club. The club comes in with their vast network of trucks, planes, trains, you name it, boats, and they send that out to all these different countries. And on the way, they stop at all these ports and they arrange and intersect with all these other shipments. And they go off in a staggering, ingenious, sort of a brilliant kind of global setup that brings food all over the world from farmers which are club members. Now, where does that leave you as a local organic farm? Out in the cold. Because you can produce something now over in country A all across the world 
<clears throat> excuse me, and that will come all the way around the world, sit on the shelf next to your local crop and be cheaper than your crop. Now, how's that possible? It's only possible by because everything is owned by a, 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 a short number of owners that are running the whole show. The, the, the economics of scale, folks, it's magic. And this is what is going on. That's breaking down. Those supply chains are breaking down now. Or they have a, a, a vast potential for the breakdown because of what's going on right now. This puts you at the forefront. This puts the organic farmer right in the middle of the picture. Now, don't go and, and be an idiot and start chemically producing food just like the mechanized farming, the, the factory farmers are doing, okay? Because we're not getting anywhere that way. Do it natural. Do it organically. Now, this word organic we're going to talk about later. But this word needs to change, folks. This is, we're getting confused with this. We're using this word for everything, and it's ridiculous. I would suggest using the term uh, nat either nature intensive, uh, nature intended, something to do with nature, okay? Um, nature compatible food instead of organic food. When, the, when a sign shows up in the store that says this, People know what you're talking about. It means you are off the grid. You are not on the government uh, expense train to get you certified as an organic farmer, which raises your prices through the roof. We all know that story. Okay. So I'm just making suggestions here, but I'm explaining a few things. And I hope that you can see that your time is now. If you're going to be doing the farming, do it now. Get started now. Get yourself in the market now. Produce food for anybody, everybody you can, and get yourself out there now. Be there ahead of time. It's April 2020 right now. By the time the summer for the Northern Hemisphere rolls around, um, there's going to be a um, tremendous opportunity for anybody who's doing this particular localized farming to step right up in the center stage and to take the ownership back that has been lacking these past decades. And so, that's the message I've got for today. And good luck to you all out there.